will be wars and rumors of wars. And it will always be so. But let us not be partakers of those that would try to take from Abraham's descendants what God promised them. At least we invoke the curse of God upon us. Verse 3 said, I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. And then he said, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. I'll tell you how they were blessed. Any nation that has Jews in their country and treats them right is a blessed nation. I'm going to give you one example. I can give you hundreds of them, but I'm going to give you one that stands out. When Hitler was in his massacre of the six million Jews, he was driving talented Jews out of the country that, that, that he wanted to kill. One of those Jews was Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein went to England and they had the slow immigration processes and, and he was not really able to stay there so he had to find a homeland so he ended up in a country called the United States of America. In that Jewish mind there was a formula that, of numbers when put together and put on paper and then put into pieces created what we call the atomic bomb. And the British had been the world power of that day. But when we opened our doors to the Jews, and one of them was Albert Einstein, we became the world superpower. And when the Japanese attacked us in Pearl Harbor, we as a nation, if we did not have the bomb, we would not have been able to fight against the Japanese and win them because the Japanese were in an accord with France and Italy and German to attack us if Japan attacked us. So both sides, the Atlantic and the Pacific, would be attacked by these armies and we would not have had military power to defeat them. But we blessed a Jew and God blessed a Gentile nation. Now, you, you, some of you say, I, I just, I, I don't see how God's in all that. You read the Old Testament and you learn a little bit. Yeah. And this promise for some of you that are all stuck on grace and law, this, this covenant started before there was anything called a law. For there was ever a Moses born, for there was ever a Ten Commandments, before there was ever a nation Israel, there was a promise to a man by the name of Abraham. When there was no law. I tell you the other way that you're blessed. The Bible says in the book of Galatians that the seed of Abraham was Christ Jesus. Every nation that has Christ in their midst, every human being, they are blessed to have the saving blood of Jesus applied to their life and to know the name of Jesus. I want to tell you that when you have the seed of Abraham in your midst, you are a blessed, blessed, blessed people. Praise God. Genesis 13, verse 14. The covenant's being expanded. I don't have time to go through it all, but we're going to talk a little bit about this. Verse 14 says, And the Lord said unto Abram, After that Lot was separated from him, Lift up now thine eyes, and look from the place where thou art northward, and southward, and eastward, and westward. For all the land which thou seest to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. So now, it's not just Abraham, but it's his seed, it's his descendants. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it, and in the breadth of it, and I will give it unto thee. Then Abraham removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of Maria, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar unto the Lord. So the next covenant now begins to expand. The Abrahamic covenant is that 
I want you to get on that mountain. And I've stood in those same mountain ranges where Lot departed from Abraham and looked each way. And you can see hundreds of miles. You can see down into the Egyptian border. You can see into the Iraqi territory. You can see up into the Syria. You can see over toward the Mediterranean coast. I'm telling you, this was a massive. A lot of people see that little strip of land that Israel's on. That's just the beginning of the migration. When God gets through, there's four or five of those Arabic nations that are going to lose their land. Land, and they're going to be given to the Jewish people. And God made a promise that this was going to happen. And so he expanded upon this covenant. Then we look in chapter 17 of the same book, the book of Genesis. And it says here in verse 7, it says, I will establish my covenant between me and thee. And thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant. This is not something that was just for the moment that Abraham lived. But this is everlasting. To be a God unto thee and thy seed after thee. So I want to state here that the Jewish people have a covenant that their God will always be the God of heaven and earth. Other religions serve other gods, demon forces that masquerade as the powers. But the Jewish people today still serve the one true God that created this earth and all of humanity and the universe. Because that was the covenant that God made with them. Someone says, well, why do they not accept Jesus? We're going to get to that today. But I want you to understand that they're not serving a false god like other religions serve false gods. The Jews serve the same God that I serve. The same God that I pray to, they pray to. The same Holy Ghost in me, they feel when they get in the Spirit. Uh, because God said He was going to be their God all through the generations that were to come. Now when you move to other religions, it's not the same God. It's a different spirit. It's a a different feeling but when you pray with the Jews even though they don't know the name of Jesus you're feeling the same God that lives in your heart <laughs> verse 8 says and I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger Abraham was a stranger all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession now God's going to give them that's Palestine forever and everlasting and I will be, notice again, their God. If you study this closely, the, the lineage of this seed goes from Abraham. Abraham has a child by the name of Isaac. Isaac has two children, Esau and Jacob. The birthright goes to Jacob. Jacob marries Rachel and Leah, has concubines. There's 12 sons born to him. They become the 12 tribes. Jacob's name's changed to Israel. When his name is changed to Israel, then those 12 those 12 sons each start a tribe of Israel. And that becomes the nation of Israel to, that we even see today. And, 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 and so this is what Israel came. It did not come through Ishmael as many would want you to believe. Even the Koran teaches opposite. It says that the promise came through Ishmael. But Ishmael was firstborn. The New Testament is clear that it was not the firstborn. Even the flesh which is born first does not have the promise of eternal life. But you have to have the spirit which is second born if you want to enter into the kingdom of God. Uh, God had a type in the Old Testament that we have to feel, feel in the New Testament when we're born again of the water and of the spirit. Uh, I want to tell you today, uh, God's got a plan, God's got a way, and you can't change it. And God gives a word, God's word's forever settled in heaven. Uh, the heavens will pass away, the earth will come to naught, uh, but the word of God shall stand forever. And when God makes covenant, God makes covenant. He he said when he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself that Abraham might know that his word would never fail. Not one promise of God would ever come to naught. Uh, but those that would trust in God's word would see God come to pass in their life as he said he would do it. Uh, <laughs> praise the Lord. Now in the book of Psalms, Chapter 89 are actually Psalms. The Psalms are not chapters, but they're songs. And Song 89. I'd like to read a few verses there for you. God made promise to Abraham. 
And you need to understand this because it's not just about getting the Holy Ghost and being saved. You need to understand the plan of God. You've got to understand eschatology. You've got to know about covenants. What God makes promise to one man and keeps, that tells us he'll make promise to 